Hey guys, this is Pharaoh2091, and welcome back to Let's Play Ace Attorney Investigations 2, Prosecutor's Path. Last time we left off, we were in jail, and Judge Courtney visited us a little bit, and then we had a long logic chess ses session with Blaze the Best, who really isn't a good guy. And, you know, honestly, I kind of felt like something was off with him from the kind of very beginning, but we just got it. Now we're here in our, in our hearing... To judge whether we can be a prosecutor or not, although I think they already have our their um uh, their minds made up, but, but but you know we'll see what's up. Ten members are present. The quorum has been met. From here on out, let the council begin. Today's deliberation shall be about Miles Edgeworth's aptitude and ability as a prosecutor. Let our members discuss this matter with a clear conscience of the goddess of law. Clear conscience. Don't make me laugh. Courtney, please give us your report. On April 5th, Prosecutor Edgeworth carried, carried out an illegal investigation and resisted arrest. He was arrested by two of our members who caught him in the act, myself and Blaze the Best. Prosecutor Edgeworth disrupted the investigation of Attorney Jill Crane's murder. He, he claims that the culprit, Kay Faraday, was arrested without sufficient evidence. Even now, his claim remains unchanged. Tell us more about the murder incident. On April 5th, the victim's body was found here, in the PIC meeting room. Regarding the, de the details... I, Sebastian the Best, the best prosecutor, will align you, you all! The prosecutor in charge, Sebastian the Best, will explain the rest of the details. The murder happened on the night of April 4th. The victim was one Jill Crane. On the same night, a black market auction was being held in this very room. I guess Miss Crane was taking part in the auction. Yep. The murder occurred in the middle of the, uh, middle of the auction, did it not? Oh, that was Courtney. When Miss Crane was found, she was dressed like the conductor of the auction. However, based on the fact that the auction continued after a murder occurred, I deduced that Miss Crane could not have been the conductor. You deduced it? You weren't the one who made that deduction. Who the hell is knocking around like a madman out there? Sebastian, please have, please show everyone the basis of the arrest of the culprit. You got it, Justine. Kay Faraday was unable to bear the weight of her good conscience. I believe you mean her guilty conscience. Well, yes, it was her guilty conscience that drove her to confess the crime. According to her confession, on the roof of this building, she met a figure in a red raincoat in the viewing platform. So Crane was wearing a red raincoat. Yes, that's correct. The culprit used the conductor's clothes as, her, as a red airing to mislead us. At the time of the murder, Miss Crane was wearing a red raincoat. It was I who discovered a raincoat near the building. He did? I'm sure it was the forensics team who found it. To be more precise, it was the forensics team under Sebastian's orders who discovered it. I thought as much! According to the blood analysis, the person in the red raincoat and, and Miss Crane were the same person! This decisive evidence is of the culprit's own confession. She testified that she killed her! That's right! The culprit is Kay Faraday! It couldn't have been anyone else but her! Well then, Edgeworth. If you have any objections, let's hear them now. I have no objections. I see, I see. It seems all the fight's gone out of you after your, our little overnight stay. I have no objections to your claim that I investigated illegally. I admit to that. However, I object to the claim that Kay is the culprit! I will testify that Sebastian's set investigation was fair and just. <laughs> of course it was, Justine! Don't you know what I'm the, I'm the fairest of them all? Edgeworth, my boy, despite my how things may seem, I actually kind of like you. If, and it's just an if, you see, if you were able you were to withdraw your objection, you might be sitting on the side of the bench tomorrow. I'll ask you one more time, Edgeworth. Do you have any objections? Don't take me for a fool. I advise you to watch what you say. This man is the one who should watch what he's saying. I'm talking about the case, not about a chair. I demand a testimony. By all means, let me hear it. I want to know how the PIC understands this case. A testimony from us, eh? Fine then, if that's what it takes you if that's what it takes to make you happy. Courtney, give him the materials from the investigation. 
Sir, but that's... It's the end of the line for him. I'll let him go out in a blaze of glory. If you insist, Mr. Chairman. I received evidence from George Courtney. Why don't we have Courtney give the testimony? I have no objections. Mr. Edgeworth. Don't worry, Kay. You just, you just watch him over there. Oh boy, okay. So before I actually get going, let me um see what new inf what new stuff I got here. Uh, actually, wait. Did I have all this? Pull bluff on the meeting room. Oh, right. Worn by the victim, the finger, the victim's fingerprints and blood were found on the hood. Huh. Okay. Continue on, I guess. Miss Crane went to the black market auction as, as a customer. The red Renko was one of the items up for auction. We believe that she left her seat after winning the bid for it. The only the only exit for the storeroom is the hatch that leads to the viewing platform. Miss Crane went out to the viewing platform where she was attacked by Kay Faraday. That was how she met her end. And that concludes my summary of the case. The red raincoat was up, uh, up for auction? Is that a fact? It is quite likely. The red raincoat has been had been uh had been a piece of evidence. In the assassination attempt of the president of Zhang Fa, as you will, as you well know, originally it, sh it should have been stored in an appropriate place. But when I asked when I asked about it, I learned that it went missing, and it somehow made its way to a black market auction. Certainly, a natural c conclusion. My my, well done, Courtney. Uh, your explanation is as clear as ever. I am much obliged. Prosecutor Edgeworth, will you concede defeat now? Heh. <laughs> Sorry, but I don't plan on it. I see. I'm relieved. Relieved? What does she mean? Come to think of it, her reason for questioning me yesterday remains a mystery. Just what is she thinking? Maybe she's not as bad as I thought she was previously. Let me look at my information again. I'm trying to think about what she said. Maybe I have stuff here... That goes against what she said. Uh, do, do. Past cases, 11 people attended, and each of them was wearing a mask. Mm. I don't know. Okay, we'll just... I gotta think about this. Uh, maybe some uh, pressing would help. Okay, I run close one on items off for auction. We believe that she left her seat after winning the bid for it. You believe that? Why? Why would the victim immediately leave her seat? That had to do with how the auction was conducted. It seems that after the winning bid, the winner was required to pay for the item immediately. That matches up with Miss Hart's testimony. We believe that Miss Kane, uh, Miss Crane, paid her bid for the Renko. And then immediately tried to leave the auction. The only exit for a storm the hand is the hatch that leads to the viewing platform, which we know. Miss Crane went out to the viewing platform where she was attacked by Kay Faraday. Wait a minute. Wait. Mm. What says it? No. Is it this? Crap. Didn't we know that she actually she never actually went up there because she was attacked right there and then? But didn't Wada say that? I mean, it's not really showing up in this testimony. At least I think it's not. But yeah, I'm gonna give it a shot here. Crap. No, that's not right. Judge Courtney, don't you have a... <coughs> excuse me. Don't you have a problem with this statement just now? Should I have a problem with it? Hmm. Exactly, because there's no problem at all, blah, blah, blah. In that case, we should have refrained from speaking. I took a hit. Uh, maybe I gotta press on... Didn't, didn't, ow, ooh, damn, hit my damn hand there. Let's, uh, press on that. Why would Kate do such a thing? We intend to question her about that, about that later. Later? That seems to be your favorite time for interrogations. If the culprit was aware that the customers were required to exit from the hatch... It would have been easy for to, to lie and wait for an ambush. Miss Crane was attacked when she was leaving the hatch. 
that was how she met our end, and that concludes my summary of the case. Mm. What the hell, Benji? <sighs> Ow, oh god, I hit him in the face. No, it's this whole thing where she says that she went out to the viewing platform. I thought she never actually made it out there. So didn't she say she was attacked? If that doesn't show it, what? Could it be the photo itself? Let me, let me check this. Huh. Yeah, now that I noticed it, look at her hand. Look at the hand. Blood. Oh, actually, there's another photo? Oh, yeah, a photo. Oh, yeah, a thing. A photo was taken. It was taken by Lada, who had snuck in the floor. After conducting another person's the one of them started uh, screaming. So yeah, I think this kind of explains that she didn't immediately go to the viewing platform. Objection! Okay. Judge Courtney, I have found it to be strange for a while now. Why is Miss Hart here with us? She's an eyewitness to this case. Isn't it only natural for her to be in attendance? Aw, shucks. <laughs> I reckon I'm more of an ear, ear witness than an eyewitness. Huh. It seems like gaining the trust of others isn't your strong point, Judge Courtney. Perhaps I simply do not wish to be as tactless, tactless as you. It appears you have failed to get the witness to tell you the most vital information. Please look at this photo. This was taken by Miss Hart. This photo seems to have been taken in the storeroom. And what of it? According to your reasoning, the incident took place on a viewing platform. However, Miss Hart encountered the incident in the storeroom. That's right. It had taken place just before this photo was taken. What? Wait a minute. If that's true, then Justine's reasoning... Exactly. It doesn't hold up. W what Miss Hart, allow me to ask you again. You saw the person in the photo with your own eyes, correct? I sure did. I see him plain as day with my own two, not two eyes. And what do you think at what did you think at the time? I figured I was about to get me a big scoop, you know? Uh, I guess that makes sense. <clears throat> That's not what I meant. What did you think of that person? Uh huh? Well, uh, I reckon she helped me bring home the bacon. Oh my God. Are you mocking me? Ah, oh, shucks. Don't make that scary old face. Uh, face. It was just a harmless little joke. Uh, the person in the red raincoat? I reckon they were the culprit. I hope you understand now. The crime occurred in the... Oh, crap. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I cannot understand your argument if, I, if you do not say it out loud. If you had simply asked, I would have been more unwilling to explain. Explain what? The sounds Miss Hart heard may not necessarily be related to the case. That is impossible. Even even for enough uh, enough for your excuses. Was the voice that Miss Hart heard really that of Miss Crane? Such a shady conversation must have had something to do with the case. What did her voice sound like? Her voice? Uh, well, it beats me. How's that supposed to know? They were both using voice changers. Yes, the voice of Miss Hart Miss Hart heard had been altered by a device. We must therefore question whether or not they have any bearing on this case. Hmm. You need not object just because you wish to sigh. Judge Courtney, it seems I have a greatly overestimated you. No, no, Courtney is quite amazing, you see. You claim that the sounds Miss Hart heard have no bearing on this case. Even if they do not, it doesn't change the fact that the crime took place in a storeroom. At the very least, the crime must have occurred before the victim went up to the rooftop. The reason being... This evidence proves the crime occurred before the, uh, the victim went up to the viewing platform. And yeah, this is something I just noticed, but uh... You look at a hand there, and there's blood on it. At first, I thought the person in Red was the culprit. Well, Miss Hart's testimony certainly made it sound that way. Precisely. It was because she saw the person's hand covered in blood. Anyone who heard her testimony would have arrived at the same conclusion. The person in the red raincoat was the, uh, was the culprit, and the blood on her hand was the victim's. However, if the person in the red raincoat was the victim, then the situation changes completely. Since blood can be seen in this photo, it must have been taken after a crime occurred. It seems we've been, we've been under the wrong impression in regards to the victim's condition. 
This photo shows the true definition of the victim. The victim wasn't really the conductor. We came came across that already. Struck the culprit. I'm not really sure about that, but perhaps that she was still alive after the attack. Because if we say that, you know, one wearing a red raincoat was a culprit, and she's right there, and there's blood right there, maybe she was still alive. The victim was definitely still alive, or still attacked in the storeroom. Immediately afterward, the victim was seen with blood on her hand. That must mean the victim was still alive even after she was attacked. The blood on her hand must have come from her own wound. No way! Are you saying that she died from a hand injury? No, that is not the case. I suspect she just ha held her hand against the wound. It can't be seen in the photo, but at this moment, she must have already suffered a fatal wound. Oh ho! If that's true, then it changes a lot of things, you know. It seems you understand. This refutes the allegations against Kay. Kay encountered the victim after his picture was taken. I believe at that point in time, the victim was, was already on the verge of death. It's likely Kay just happened to be present when the victim reached the end of her, her strength. That is quite a coincidence. Indeed. I can only say that she was, uh, she was at a wrong place at the wrong time. Prosecutor Edgeworth, it seems that you have forgotten a crucial fact. Ah, you mean, th you mean that, right? He must be pretending that he hasn't noticed it, you see? What, do you, what did you say? Are you implying that I forgot something? Courtney, I think it's about time you gave him his last rites. Hey, Pops, just seems with me, you know. Don't lure her around like that. You know, even though you're my son, you're so embarrassing. I'm not embarrassing. I'm sorry, but you're both rather embarrassing. Justine, give Mr. Edgeworth his, um, um... Very well. I shall give him his last rites. Oh boy, here we go again. Edgeworth's con contradiction. When the body was found, there was three wounds in Miss Crane's chest. I'm sure you're well aware what kind of wounds that these were, right? Yes, she was stabbed in the heart with a three-pronged uh, candelabra. Is there, uh, is there any person who could survive such an injury? Please take a close look at the autopsy report. Can you still, uh, can you still say the same thing after reading it? Hmm... Well done, Justine. It, oh, I didn't catch what he said. That. I will offer a rebuttal, of course. Well, why would you do that? Did you hear what Justine just said? Of course I did, and I still plan to object to it. It's not fair! You're always opposing me at every turn! It was never my intention to oppose you. Uh-huh? Really? It's simply not worth my time. Uh, I see, so that's how it is. Yep, yep, after all, I'm... That's enough, you know. You're embarrassing me. You're embarrassing your father, you see. Huh? What do you mean, Pops? Oh, boy. So, yeah, something tells me that... It's just the new information that's coming to play here, which is probably the, uh... The red raincoat. Worn by the victim. Victim's fingerprints and blood were found on the hood. The hell's making that noise? Oh, there it is. Oh, that's, a, that's my dog doing. Alright. Fingerprints and blood are found on the hood. But, you know, as I take a closer look at the actual thing itself, the, um, the hood, I don't see stab marks. And if she was wearing this when she was attacked, then where the hell is it? So yeah, I'm well aware she was stabbed in the heart with a three-pronged candle candelabra. Okay, say she was, and she, but if she was wearing this, then where the hell's the um, where's the proof that you know she was attacked with that? Chairman of Best, do you know what this is? It seems to be a red raincoat. How about it, Courtney? The victim, Miss Crane, was wearing this earlier. Prosecutor Edgeworth, must I repeat my explanation to you all over again? I suppose it just might come to, come to that, Judge Courtney. Answer me this. This red raincoat was stained with blood. Do you happen to remember where specifically those blood stains were located? Of course I do. They were on the hood. Wait! It can't be! Yeah, I think we know where, we, where they're going at, but... I, I myself didn't see any holes there in terms of a stab wound, so... 
Is that where we're getting at? Hmm? What does this mean? Just Courtney, you were were there any other bloodstains besides the ones on the hood? None. We're detected. Don't you think it's strange? The victim died from a stab wound to the chest. In that case, there should have been bloodstains on the front of the raincoat. However, the only blood they found on the, was on the hood. This is a huge contradiction. The wound on the victim's head is no ordinary wound. After all, the victim sustained this wound before she was stabbed in the chest. It does appear that way, doesn't it? The victim first suffered a head wound. If she had already been stabbed in the chest, the raincoat would have been stained with blood. Therefore, it is unthinkable that her chest uh, was stabbed before she suffered a head wound. So the order of the wounds would be first the head, followed by the chest. However, does that really change the situation? With this, a contradiction is born, one that overturns all the assumptions up until now. Is that the change? Uh, is that the change really? Is the change really that great? I look forward to hearing it. Well then, this contradiction. Why don't you show it to me? With evidence. Which piece of evidence shows the contradiction that arises from the order of the wounds? The only thing I can think of would be the actual autopsy report. Stab wounds to the left chest is caused death. Head wound was post mortem. Head wound was post mortem. Burn. So yeah, this this says that it was the head wound was post mortem, but we're saying it was beforehand. This is the autopsy report written by Dr. Young. According to this, the head wound was post mortem. But that's not what the raincoat shows. Exactly. It's the exact opposite. Bailiff, hurry and summon Dr. Bonnie Young at once. Until we hear that she has what she has to say, we cannot cl uh, close the curtains on this case. Yes, ma'am. Understood. Dr. Young is a busy, busy person. It will take some time for her to arrive. In the meantime, let us try viewing this case from another angle. There's something... Something that's been on my mind. One of the key figures in this case, the conductor. We still don't know who that person is. Now that you mention it, even after our investigation, we still have no idea who it is. The conductor has come up time and time again during this hearing. However, at this point in time, their identity remains a mystery. How about it? Do you have any ideas? I'm still not sure at the moment. However, there is someone I, ha I have in mind. A certain individual involved in this case who might know something about it. Wh who's that? Blaze the best! I demand your testimony! Wh what? Don't say such a stupid thing! Why would you suspect Pops? Are you trying to cast suspicion towards the chairman of the PIC? Do you understand what that means? Status and prestige mean nothing when it meet up before the truth. That man is trying to pin the crime on Kay. The evidence that I was in Kay's possession, the ticket stuff, the mask, the corsage, these items did not come into her possession out of her own volition. By some method, that man purposely planted them on her person personage. It's hard to believe such a sudden accusation, but I'll ask just in case. Why would he do that? Obviously, to direct suspicion towards Kay. I succeed in drawing out those words from him earlier. Mr. Chairman, your response? Are you too shocked to speak? And what of it? Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said, what of it? You say you drew out some words from me, but you don't have a shred of proof, you know? No one else has heard it but you. It just doesn't work like that, you see. Or do you have something else? You know, some kind of basis for your argument. His confidence. He also showed at the cell. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I would like to explain. I would like you to explain once more. I trust we have your permission, Mr. Chairman. But of course, I'm pretty interested in this matter myself. You know, I like to know what just oh, just what part of me seems criminal to Edgeworth. There's no one as honest as I am. You see. How can he say that with such a straight face? Let's start at the top. The fact that the au auction was held in this, in this room is a cause for suspicion. This is the PIC meeting room. I imagine it would be difficult for non-members to enter. Well, that's why all the members have key cards, you know? I 
thing we can assume that multiple auctions have been held here before. Therefore, suspecting a member to PSC would be... the best! Yes, because the conductor had, had, had to have been a PIC member. Wait! No! W what what was that all about? W what do I do, Pops? I just helped the enemy! <laughs> Sebastian really is an idiot, you know? But you see, Edgeworth, I'm not the only one with access, you know. Indeed, there are 11 members in the PIC. Even if we rule out the victim, Miss Crane, there are still 10 potential suspects. It's not me, but, but, but it couldn't have been a chairman, right? I don't know who it is, but well, whoever it should be, just should just come forward. Yes, yes, everyone, just calm down, you know? Edgeworth, is that all you got? Where's the evidence to suspect me? Oh, so you've fallen silent then. But you've gone so far, you see. I won't forgive you anymore. It's too late for regrets, you see, you know? I'm a very important man, you see. Former chief prosecutor and a chairman of the PIC. Ugh. It's fine if you're not prepared to, fa to face the fire, you know? Because you see... Either way, it won't make any difference. Hmm. Because I'm going to bully you. How about we go into that in the next episode, guys? So, as usual, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for Let's Play Ace Attorney Investigations 2, Prosecutor's Path. I'll see you guys later.